I am a doctor at Max Hospital in New Delhi, India and treat children with abnormal lumps in the body. One of my patients is a four-year-old boy called Shorya. Shorya is an only child and lives in New Delhi. He was attending nursery and had received all his vaccinations and had previously been well, achieving all his normal growth and developmental milestones. Around two months before coming to see me, he started complaining of a headache in the front of his head. He complained of disturbed sleep, often waking at night because of these headaches, making him irritable in the mornings. Initial assessment by his pediatrician included a normal neurological examination and did not reveal any clues. Suggestions to improve his sleep habits were given alongside a prescription of paracetamol. But this did not relieve his headaches and shortly after he began to vomit upon waking, although he did not appear to be nauseated. Shore's mother then began to notice that he was walking unsteadily and that his head was tilted to one side. Extremely worried, she took him back to the pediatrician who ordered a CT scan. This was two months after his first symptoms. The CT revealed a tumour in the back of the brain. He was then urgently referred to my hospital. When I examined Shorya, I also asked his mother the following questions. How long has Shorya had the headaches? At what time of the day did he get the headaches? Do the headaches wake him up? Does he have nausea and or vomiting with the headaches? Does he have any abnormal eye movements or are there any problems with his vision? Is he increasingly weak and clumsy? Has there been a change in his behaviour and activity levels at home or at his nursery? Has he had any abnormal movements, fits or unresponsive episodes? During the examination, I found Shorya to be lethargic but aware of his surroundings. His head was tilted to one side and his coordination was abnormal. His vision was unaffected but the examination of the back of the eye revealed that the pressure in his brain was higher than normal. He had an MRI brain scan under sedation which confirmed the location and size of the tumour as well as the increased pressure in the brain. He was promptly seen by our neurosurgeons and subsequently had a successful surgery to remove the tumour and relieve the pressure. Further treatment was planned after the pathology report was available. We also ensured that the family received timely information, counselling and support throughout the process. Here are some key points to remember. Brain tumours are the second most common childhood cancer. Sadly, diagnosis is often delayed because not all brain cancers have easily recognisable signs. Some signs are gradual in onset or are similar to those that occur with other common childhood conditions. The signs and symptoms of brain tumours are varied and determined by the part of the brain affected, the developmental stage and ability of the child or young person and whether or not intracranial pressure is raised. Routine tests may also be normal. A normal neurological examination does not exclude a brain tumour. Persistence or recurrence of symptoms, presence of more than one symptom or progression of any symptoms, abnormalities or changes should raise the alarm to immediately refer and call in specialists. It is important that primary care physicians and general paediatricians know the signs and symptoms which raise the possibility of a brain tumour in a child and investigate further through CT or MRI brain scan and or link to a referral centre in a timely manner. Remember, early detection of a brain tumour and timely treatment gives the child a greater chance of survival.